Today's lesson is an introduction to myths, epics, and legends told through the stories of gods, heroes, and monsters. This is a half credit semester long English 11 and 12 class. And today is meant to really just get us thinking about thinking. All right, let's begin. So we're going to be starting with a video. I'm going to let you watch that video on your own. And the video basically covers the premise that every story follows a basic sequence of events, especially when we're talking about these ancient myth stories of heroes, for example. And the video focuses on Joseph Campbell, a philosopher and theologian who created the theory behind what's called the monomyth or the hero's journey. And he published this in a book titled A Hero with a Thousand Faces. The general premise is the idea that if we track a sort of formula of the journey of a hero, we see that most stories are kind of the same. And I can't remember where I read it or saw it, but I think we'll be watching another video later that sort of talks about this idea that long ago, when books were very expensive, people carried essentially two books with them when they immigrated to the United States, the Bible and the collected works of Shakespeare. So if we're looking at uh, the King James Version of the Bible, as well as the collected works of William Shakespeare, many stories we see sort of have been used then to create every other story. <clears throat> so the idea is there's no such thing as a new story. We'll explore this idea uh, more in depth later on, and we'll be turning back to the video that you just watched and Joseph Campbell's monomyth idea. To begin, as we start this class, what I really want you to think about is thinking more in depth. So early on when we are reading something for the first time, we're really just reading at the surface level. So a lot of teachers use the idea of an iceberg when trying to get to the heart of something more in depth about their curriculum. And with literature, this definitely reigns true. So when I say I want to get more in depth, we're thinking Titanic here. It looks like it's just a small thing, but deep down there could be a lot going on. And does it matter? Yes, because it could be sink or swim. So uh, continuing this metaphor, when we first read, we're just reading for entertainment. So what's there? What do we get out of it? Do we laugh? Do we cry? What's the story about? In the deeper meaning, we start to truly understand maybe a little bit more about ourselves, about society. Is the author being literal, metaphorical, etc.? So what type of connections can we make based on the motivation of characters? Lastly, when we truly understand a text, and sometimes this comes from multiple readings, we don't always understand a text the first time that we encounter it. That's when we can truly get to the heart or the big idea of what it's really about. Some of the texts that we'll be reading in class is more than a thousand, two thousand years old. So to truly understand it, we might need to look at it more than once. Because of that, we're not reading exceptionally long novels, typically. We're just reading excerpts, primarily, from epics and ancient stories. Only when we really get to the big idea can we understand a, a, a connection to humanity from long ago through today and maybe long into the future, hopefully. So beyond just the basic theme, maybe some moral or value or lesson that we're supposed to delve from the reading, we might get to a broader human connection about what makes humans human. All right, so to start this out, we're going to be looking at something called an allegory. An allegory is essentially just a story with basic plots and characters, but we're not reading an allegory to necessarily get this super entertaining story. The story is meant to be there for a symbolic meaning for something more in depth. So again, looking at the iceberg, when we're reading an allegory, we're looking at the surface, but we're really trying to delve out the deeper meaning to get to the big idea. All right, so in this course, we'll be looking as uh, Joseph Campbell did at both philosophy and theology, and we're going to start with Plato. 
Plato is an ancient Greek philosopher, and in the Republic, he evaluates the allegory of the cave. So to work on our in-depth reading skills, we're going to pause for a moment now as a class, and I will read aloud the allegory of the cave. After reading the story in class, I will ask students to answer some questions. So I have to skip ahead here just a little bit, try not to get dizzy. Well, I'm going to skip ahead a lot. Okay, so here are the questions to the allegory of the cave. After we have read the entire story aloud, I'll ask students to either work independently if you choose or get together with a partner or a small group of three. See what questions you can formulate an answer to just based on the first reading. Then I will hand out a physical copy and give you all an opportunity to answer the questions more in depth once you've had an opportunity to annotate the text and determine if there's a little bit more going on there. Once we have done so, we'll watch that little video, which you can go back to and see. Let me back up here for you so you can see. There's a little video here that will help with the understanding. To watch it, you just simply need to click on it. To further enhance understanding, we talk about this idea of how do we trust what we see? How do we know that what we see is truly what's actually there? And just for fun, we take a little look at this image. Some of you have maybe seen it before. When some people look at the image, it appears to be the face of a duck with the bill and the eye of the duck. Depending on how you perceive the image, some will look at it as here is the face of a rabbit, the bunny's ears, and the bunny's eye. Much of what we see in the world is determined by the influences that we've had in our lives, how other people tell us to see things. And as we grow up, we're influenced by our teachers, parents, clergy, friends, friend groups, peer groups, athletics, you name it. There's always something there to influence you. We have to apply our basic understanding in order to get to deeper meaning and try to make human connection. And that's why we're all different and we all have different understanding. So we'll continue to talk about the allegory of the cave a little bit as the class, and that will get us to the bigger idea of what we're going to be studying this semester. Um, and we will start by the exploration of religion. I will read this quote to the class as a whole. So here we go. Religion is part of the human makeup. It's also part of our culture and intellectual history. Religion was our first attempt at literature, the texts our first attempt at cosmology, making sense of where we are in the universe, our first attempt at healthcare, believing in faith, healing, etc. So, point being, religion is pretty much the basic fundamental of stories and where they come from. So we'll need to take a little bit of a look at that in order to understand what we're reading. All right, here I just have a little pie chart for you talking about world religions. Uh, it's important that we don't get too narrow in our own uh, scope of everybody is fill in the blank, mostly Christian, for example. So you can see that that is, though, the majority as a world religion. So are many other religions still very popular today. And we'll be taking a little bit of look at all these. Okay, so for this little mini lesson, we'll quickly just cover the concept of philosophy versus theology because I'll be mentioning these two ideas. First of all, theology is a study of a religious faith. It's a practice, the study of God, God's relation to the world. Philosophy is a study of ideas and knowledge, trying to get to truth of nature and meaning of life. And there, I know, is a lot of debate about evolution, creation, God. Um, of course, now it's going to escape me. Um, the idea that there is no God. <laughs> I, I know, I'm drawing a blank. We'll talk about it in class when it comes to me. Um, atheism, there we go. I know I could delve it out. So we'll be talking about um, mostly theology and philosophy. God's idea of the concept of the universe, philosophy is knowledge concept of the universe. So you can see that philosophy tries to answer a few questions, as does theology. So let's skim way over here. 
All right, so they both are basically trying to answer the same questions, but with a fundamental truth as the basis. One may be religion, one may be knowledge. Theology heavily borrows from philosophy, uh, ideas such as Plato, Aristotle, some of you know Socrates. Uh, however, with theology, religion is a basic fundamental. So we might ask the question, how can X religious assumption be true when this other philosophical or scientific idea seems to contradict what the religious assumption is, etc. I know, it's heavy stuff, but we'll get more into that later. So let's end with this question, what does all this have to do with English class? All right, well, uh, we'll have a little bit of class discussion here, but really we come down to this idea that it has a lot to do with English class because we're reading ancient literature. So without a base knowledge of theology and philosophy, much of what we read is going to be lost. It's like you read an allusion to Shakespeare, but you've never read the text, so you don't get the meaning. Somebody says that a character has Herculean strength, yet you don't know who Hercules is, so how can you draw those understandings? So understanding deeper meaning takes work. We're going to observe, look for patterns, and draw some occlusions in this course. And so let's get started.